Okay, so in this video, we continue the classical algorithm implementation with the disjoint set. So we are going to define an init method for the disjoint set. It's going to get a self. It's going to get a vertex list. Okay, this vertex list is going to contain the vertices in the given graph because at the beginning we are going to assign a single node to every single vertex. Okay, so we just have to have the vertex list is equal to a vertex list. We have to define that the self dot root nodes, we are going to have a list basically, it's going to contain the root of the disjoint sets. Okay, at the beginning of course, we are going to have as many root nodes as the number of nodes, and because the number of nodes are equal to the number of vertices, we are going to have as many root nodes as the number of vertices in the given graph. Then we have the node count, we have to track that how many nodes do we have, it is initialized to be zero at the beginning. We are going to count that how many sets do we have, so we have a set count, basically this set is the disjoint set, okay. And I'm not sure whether it's clear or not, but every single disjoint set is composed of nodes, okay. And then I would like to call the make sets method with the vertex list. Because at the beginning we are going to make as many sets, so basically as many nodes as the number of vertices in the vertex list. But let's start with two methods. We are going to have a find method and we are going to have a merge method as we have discussed in the theoretical section. It's going to have a self of course and a node. And we are going to define a current node is equal to the node at the beginning. And while the current node dot parent node is not none, we just have to increment the current node in the sense that the current node is equal to the current node dot parent node. Why? Because this is how the disjoint set algorithm works that we have to find the root node no matter what, because the root node is going to represent the whole disjoint set. So if we start with the node D, we have to get the parent as far as we bump into the root node, and the root's parent is equal to a non. If we start at the C, then we get the parent, the B. The parent of B is not a non, so we keep going there. The parent of A is a non, so we know that this is the root node. Why is it important? Because in a disjoint set, this is a disjoint set basically, and it's going to be represented by the root node. So this is why we have this while loop. While the current node parent is not a none, we know that the current node cannot be the root node. Okay, and anyways, we know that the root is equal to the current node, and we initialize back the current node to be equal to the node, because we would like to make the so-called path compression. So while the current node is not the root node, we just have to compress the path. So the temporary variable is going to be the current node that parent node. The current node that parent node is equal to the root node, and the current node, basically we just swap them. The current node is equal to the temp node. And after this while loop, we just have to return with the root.node ID, because we are going to differentiate the disjoint sets according to the node IDs. This is what we have been discussing, that if we would like to find the D, then we just have to make sure that the parent node of D is the B, the parent of the B is the root node basically, so we just have to make sure that this D is going to be connected directly to the root node. Why is it good? Because the next time we search for this D, we are able to get the root node in a single step. It's going to be faster, hence the name Pass Compression, because we are going to represent the given disjoint set with the root node or the root node ID. That's why this is the path compression. Here we get a node. Then we're going to find the root node. 
if we have the root node, we just have to make sure that we compress the path and we return with the node ID of the root node. This is the so-called find method. Okay, then we have the other method, the so-called merge. It's going to take uh, node 1 and node 2 and it's going to calculate the index of the node 1. We just have to call the self.find for the node 1. So what's going to be the root node and the roots node ID? It's going to return with the roots node ID for the node 1. What's going to be the index 2? It is the self.find for the node 2. Okay, we know for certain that if the index 1 is equal to the index 2, we just have to return because it means that they are in the same set. They are in the same set. So we don't have to merge them because by default they are in the same set. We have to calculate the root nodes for all of them. So self dot root nodes. This is why we have this list basically at the index 1. Index 1. Then we have the root 2. We just have to get it from the root nodes. Index 2. And basically we have to make sure, this is what we have been discussing in a theoretical section, that we keep merging. So basically we keep appending the smaller tree to the greater tree. So if the root 1 dot haste parameter is smaller than the root 2 haste parameter, it means that we have to append the root 1 dot parent node is equal to the root 2. So what does it mean? That we append the root 1, so the set 1, to the root 2, so the disjoint set 2. Okay, elif the root 1 dot height is greater than the root 2 dot height. We just have to do the opposite. Root 2 dot parent node is equal to the root 1. And else we know that they are the same, so they are in the same size, they have the same height parameter. So I'm just going to append the root 2 dot parent to the root 1. It doesn't matter, we could say that root 1 parent is equal to the root 2. It doesn't matter, but what's very important that we have to increment the height parameter accordingly. If for the root 1 for example, so the height parameter is equal to the root 1 height parameter plus 1. If we would append in the opposite, so the root 1 parent is equal to the root 2, then we have to increment the root 2 haste parameter. In this case, it's going to be fine. We have been talking about that how to calculate the rank parameter for these disjoint set nodes. Okay, and it's very important because according to the haste parameter, we can decide that what set to link to the other. So in this case, for example, we are going to link this tree to this one because this is the smaller tree. So we are always going to connect the smaller tree to the largest tree's root node. So that's why, as you can see, this was the smaller tree is going to be connected to the root node of the greater tree. Okay, so that's why it's going to be like this. It's very important that we just have to update the haste parameters if the haste parameter for root 1 and root 2 are the same, so they are equal. Okay, so that's all about the merge, and we have the make sets basically. It's going to have the def make sets for the self and for the vertex list. We're just going to iterate through the vertices in the vertex list, and we're just going to call the make, sorry self.make set method on every single v vertex. So we have to define this make set with the self and the vertex and we just have to create a node. So the node is equal to a new node with the height parameter 0 at the beginning, then the length of the self.root nodes, okay, and then none. What are these parameters? As you may recall, the first parameter is the height. Then the node ID is going to be the length of the root nodes. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. 
and the parent node is initialized to be none. Then the vertex dot parent node is equal to the node, and we append it. So self dot root nodes dot append that given node. So this is we are able to set the IDs according to the length of the root nodes. On every single make set iteration, it's going to increment the size of the root nodes. So it's going to have the index zero, then for the second node one, then two, and so on. Then of course we have to increment the set count is equal to the self dot set count plus one. And we have to increment the node count is equal to the self dot node count plus one. Okay, so that's all about the disjoint set. We have the find method with the pass compression. We have the merge with the index one, index two, and we just have to make sure that as we have discussed in a theoretical section, we are going to append the smaller tree to the largest tree. You may pose the question that, okay, what is this tree? We have been talking about that the disjoint set is represented with the help of a sets of nodes. Okay, so basically a set of nodes, so a disjoint set is just a tree-like structure with nodes. So that's why we have to do accordingly. And what's very important, that we are going to increment the haste parameter just in case when the root one and the root two, so basically the two substrees haste are the same, so they are equal. And of course the make sets is going to have as many nodes as the number of vertices in the original graph. So we are going to assign a single node to every single vertex. This is what we have been discussing and that's why a vertex has a node parameter. Okay, and sorry for that. I think that it's going to be just the node. Okay, so vertex.node is equal to the node. Thanks for watching.